Devstream177 announced another step in the right direction towards the end game content within Warframe. Now, let's just go ahead and get a few things clear. The mere concept of the end game in Warframe hasn't really been taken seriously for quite a while, and to some, never at all. However, with the lead developer swap, we have seen the pacing of the game improve drastically in just a short period of time, and the hope for Warframe's future genuinely hasn't looked as bright as it does today. So, grab a cover, kick back, and let's have a discussion Discussion with a little story guiding you to where we are right now and what's to expect over the next year or so with the state of the game. Just before the first open world update of Planes of Eidolon back in 2017, the content Warframe had to offer was rather minimal in comparison to the day's standards. At most, since we're focusing on endgame discussions, Warframe offered raids, or better yet known as trials, in which were ways to acquire some of the best upgrades for your builds, Arcanes. Now, don't get me wrong, raids were fun at the time, but looking back now on reality, they were more nostalgic than ideal. You see, if those raids existed today in their current state, well, there would be a lot of concern. I mean, after all, one of the raid bosses, they heck, you could literally one shot with a damn fishing spear. Now, it is to know I'm all for the concept of raids existing in Warframe, just not those ones. In fact, with the introduction of the new Murmur boss we've already seen, in my opinion, better mechanics and more punishing gameplay than what any of the trials had back in the day, so that's a great sign to see. Now, I do believe we'll be seeing raids again. I can understand it was not in the vision of DE to release raids in the last few years due to their focus being on open worlds and finishing a new war campaign. However, now that those are done, we are beginning a new arc for Warframe, so the discussion of raids being back on the table, I believe is actually more likely than ever with the strength of the development team today. Three years further down the line from the first open world update, Planes of Eidolon, we now have all three worlds for all three main factions. We've got the Planes of Eidolon for the Grenier, Fortuna for the Corpus, and Deimos for the Infested. Planes of Eidolon still holds up pretty well to this very day. The likes of Eidolon Hunt still sustain quite a fair bit of interest in regards to the challenge and some rewards. Speed running and trying to hunt as efficiently as possible is literally all some specific players do when playing this game. And honestly, it's great to see that they enjoy it. And in terms of min maxing, it's been fun to see the meta change over time, especially in terms of positioning and utilizing niche mechanics in the game to really push every second of saving time and getting the fastest runs possible. Or Vadis and Fortuna offers, in my opinion, one of the most enjoyable mechanical fight concepts in the Orb Mothers. Well, Profit Taker to be more specific. She is currently still one of, if not, the best way to obtain credits in the game, whilst also offering a rotational focus on which elements to attack her with displayed in front of her face, making you really deep dive into your loadouts and cover as many elements as possible throughout all your different weaponry. Now, I believe I actually spend more time covering my builds than I do actually fighting the damn thing. The second Orb Mother, Exploiter, feels more of a cinematic boss fight. And although the mechanics are good, the rewards just don't deem worthy enough to farm over and over again, which is where it begins its downfall, because unfortunately, there is actually a third Orb Mother which bathes in the lake waiting to reveal its presence. Either that, or we actually need to check a pulse on the damn thing, because DE, does this thing even got gills? Now, this is a hot topic brought up every so often, as people always enjoy boss fights, and just like raids, I don't think we'll ever hear the end of third old mother when from the echo chambers of people craving more in-game content and in my opinion rightly so i do believe that just like raid she will be revealed and hopefully introduced in a way unlike the other two orb mothers to give us a new and interesting fight taking place against her so then finally we got deimos but let's cut to the point here i feel a little underwhelmed See, the map itself is fantastic, and the quality of life it brought to open worlds was also great, but the lack of boss presence within this area to me is a little sad to see. I do understand that we have Necromax within the isolation vaults below, but I would argue that they could exist with the idea of fighting something to the likes and the size of the Deimos Worms of Vassant Foam. Now, it doesn't need to exactly be those worms in particular. I mean, look at the Aura Worm, for example. But an infested worm fight spewing out of the ground and catching players off guard would have been pretty epic to witness as we roamed around the infested tile set looking of signs to its whereabouts. You know, like some rumbling or crack 
attacks in the ground. Either way, it seemed that Open World started really strong with Eidolons, but boss-wise and endgame focus fell off quite short with the release of Deimos. In 2018, arbitrations were added and offered a great way to farm Endo, in which still holds up pretty well today as a good method of income. They also introduced a more hardcore aspect to them, being one of the first and few methods of when you die, you actually die, exposing a lot of builds and a lot of bad habits within playstyles that players had. Survival became more important, and ironically, this game mode actually has some of the best survival mods to help us. The likes of Rolling Guard and Adaptation really enhanced our builds for what was our next challenge. This steel path update, and I would argue, yes, when it came out, it was all right at best. But the more that I think about it today, the more that I realize I genuinely and wholeheartedly believe this might have actually been one of the most important updates to the game, bringing everything up a notch and really showing us that our builds lacked a lot and needed working on. In fact, today's staple of a good build is whether or not it can withstand and handle steel path missions. Although it's the advanced method of a star chart, it's still the same missions really, just harder enemies. So that means it falls into the endgame content that we do, because every day and every week that I play Warframe, I would prefer to be on the steel path at pretty much all times in comparison to the normal path. You see, there's more benefit in terms of rewards within these missions, and there's actually better challenge in terms of combat experience against higher leveled enemies. Nowadays, genuinely speaking, we are the strongest we have ever been offensively and even defensively. So enemy levels haven't really caused us a problem due to the mechanical options that exist today. The likes of shield gating, for example, has given us an insane way to survive defensively. And offensively, we've had a lot of diversity brought back to our kits. For a long time, it was pretty much just melee that would scale and handle against the strongest enemies. However, with the introduction of the galvanized mods and new arcanes, our weapon diversity is in a much better state, where any weapon genre, be it primary, secondary, or melee, can scale and handle the hardest of situations put in front of us. This is great. After all, I for one don't miss the spin to win Adarax meta, and I don't think my pinky finger misses it either. So I won't go and take too long to talk about these subjects, but this has always been an existence within Warframe and will forever be a continuum, as the likes of endurance runs, surviving as long as you possibly can, has pretty much been pushed to the limit in terms of what enemies can scale to. Level 9999 is pretty much the cap as of right now, and we can handle them with ease with specific setups, negating, stripping, and debuffing anything that they put in front of us. So from where we go from here, well, that's a long in-depth conversation that could take place one day very soon. Now, as for the speed running, it's always been a blessing to watch players improve a fight or master a movement to shave off time. Even the likes of exploits to get around things or DPS meta changes due to the state of the current game. Now, I myself personally still enjoy watching Destiny 2's raid or dungeon speedruns, and to me, it's no different than watching Warframe's Eidolon or Orb Mother speedruns. In practice, it always looks simple until you try to duplicate, and then you realize why it looks so easy. You see, your experience doesn't match the hours that these players took to learn, articulate, and craft their very playstyles. These concepts will never die in a game like this, so long as people are always willing to put in the time to to challenge what the game has to offer. Jumping ahead a little in the timeline, we have another open world added to the mix of the theory paradox, but it's not quite the same as the other worlds, offering a roguelike decree system, ever enhancing and rewarding you for staying longer and longer the more that you remain and complete objectives within either the circuit missions or the Daviri experience spiral experience game modes. Although the Daviri update was beautiful, the Daviri experience itself is more of a typical open world situation. You'll be roaming around Around doing a little of whatever freedom that you want to go ahead and do. However, the Daviri Steel Path circuits offer arguably some of the best endgame weapon types today in Carnage. These weapons are improvements to already existing weapons within the game that add a flavor to their combat experience whenever you use them, adding passive variety and selectable upgrades, but also changing the way the weapon fires or is used by evolving the built-up charges. 
these weapons are a must-have, along with the Incarnum weapons that you can pick up within the Angels of Zeraman update from the Trader Cavalero. And to note, there will also be more Incarnums coming within the next update, surrounding more Whispers in the Wall content located at Deimos. Now, these weapons are a fantastic addition to the game, and I'm always keen to see more types and more upgrades to these over time. However, the main reason why I talk about the very paradox was going back to that roguelite system that I mentioned earlier. This added quite an interesting amount of replayability during your combat, picking and choosing which decrees to enhance whichever build that you brought in. So if you enjoy a status melee playstyle, there are decrees that can make your melee hit twice, whilst also applying double damage to your status effects. And there are over 50 different decrees to go ahead and choose from, and some of them can be upgraded yielding bigger percentage returns over time. This concept came out really well, and I was actually quite surprised at how much I still enjoy the likes of decrees today. Now, I obviously realize we cannot go around adding this roguelite system to every mission, but I will ask you guys, if the option was on the table to receive a new specific game mode or an existing game mode in a new tile set within a new update, would you guys like to see the decree system return with it? Let me hear your thoughts on that. During the release of the Operation Failbreaker update, Warframe has given us one of our weekly endgame activities that still has gone on quite strong for over a year as of right now. The likes of Archon Hunts introduced a reward that many endgame players are foaming at the mouths for, Archon Shards. Due to how limiting they are per week, non-tradable and non-purchasable, they are arguably one of the best rewards an endgame player is chasing after right now. Offering a variety mix of free upgrades when infusing them into your Warframe is pretty much a no-brainer to seek if you care about min-maxing or making your favourite frame the ultimate force to play within the game. The Archon Hunts themselves are basically an upgraded version of the existing daily mission type, Sorties. However, these hunts are weak weeklies as opposed to dailies. During these missions, similar to arbitrations, if you die within them, you will fail to claim any rewards and have to repeat the mission until you successfully get it right. Again, giving you purpose to make sure that whatever build you bring in is modded within the right survivability you need to go and get the job done. Now the hunts themselves are good, and although our end game due to the rewards, the boss mechanics are decent at best. They're not too hard, they're not too easy. It's enough to make you pay attention and react, which is actually a good spot for them to be in. Regardless of the difficulty or whether or not you enjoy them, the rewards are what we're here for, and I think that they've done a great job at getting that part right. The Archon Shards are a hot topic of this video. As we're covering Endgame, this, as of right now, is arguably the peak for most players. I have all of my mods maxed out. I have nearly all of my Arcanes maxed out as well. However, not all of my Warframes have full Shard upgrades, giving me a weekly purpose to return back to the game. The likes of other missions that also provide these will also add to your weekly shopping list of things to do. As it stands right now, Carl missions, which were also introduced in the Operation Operation Veilbreaker update also provide a way for you to pick up an extra Archon shot. However, in March 2024, the next update, Dante's Unbound, will no longer attach Archon Shard rewards to Cold Missions. Instead, these rewards will actually be placed to another trader, meaning that you won't have to do Cold Missions every week outside of the obvious rewards that it holds. This brings us to the most recent update, Whispers in the Walls, which in my opinion will go down as the beginning of a new era for Warframe. Not just because it literally is the beginning story-wise, but because in terms of quality and performance, the game went from good updates to great updates consistently at this point. One example of this introduced a secret harder version of the new Murmur boss, and when I tell you on day one, figuring this fight out without knowing what all the mechanics were, what his resistances was, what it could do, what we could do, and what punishments we received, it was, without a doubt, the best introductionary hardest boss to the game we have ever faced. This also came with its own unique reward for bragging rights to place at the front of your ship, and I cannot express how much a simple gesture of a collection item like this persuades and encourages players to attempt and obtain it. This needs to be encouraged more, and I hope that they continue to add more reward incentives like these to more features and game modes in the future. And guys, before moving on to the next topic, I would like to stress a point before continuing. Warframe is a free-to-play game. This means, in order for their growth, it helps the game if they can include new players to new updates. Now, I'm okay with that idea. Just 
not all of the time. And this update completely ignored that and focused on the end game side of things, which was fantastic. Not because I'm an elitist, but because I get questions of new players whenever they turn up to my stream, they go ahead and ask me, what does end game hold? Well, for you, this video is expressing that. But what I used to run and rave to them on about was that if the goal of the game is to expand everything catering to new and veteran players, then down the line, the end game falls off heavily and the new players don't really have a reason to stick around. Thankfully, I believe that this is no longer the case. I genuinely believe in this leadership. The recent updates have only but proved that as well. So if by chance DE happened to stumble onto this video with what you are doing right now, keep it up. This is without a doubt the correct way to ooze enthusiasm back into your players and back into content creators, which only but help to spread the words. New players will now have things to look forward to and overall the growth of the game will continue to flourish as everyone has a grinding goal purpose to push and achieve. And guys, that's obviously not to say that new things could not include new players. It's just to say that the balance recently has been great. Okay, so that took quite a bit of time and thank you guys for staying tuned up until this point, but let's talk about where we are right now and what is about to happen. First up, Netracells. The Netracells are the most recent way to obtain arcing shards. However, unlike the other two methods mentioned earlier, the Netracells are basically a gamble, whether or not that you can get an arcing shard per run up to a maximum of five runs. And I'll be honest with you guys, these are not my favorite missions. I don't mind farming, grinding, gambling for something, but when it comes to it being limited per week, it can unfortunately feel like a waste of time if what I'm after I do not receive, especially after five runs and I don't even receive just one Arkham shot. Digital extremes have heard our outcries and the loot pool will be less saturated going forwards, making shards a better probability chance to receive them. So until then, I will hold my criticism further and see if the new values help ease that loss of feeling I received over the last few months of running these missions. But to go ahead and talk about the missions themselves, let's begin with the fact that the base enemy level is the highest in the game at level 200 plus. This is again a step forwards. We're making enemies more daunting and making players double check their loadouts, push their builds, max their mods, and farm for items to help improve their damage and survivability. Now, I for one enjoy this because build crafting is arguably one of the main core concepts of why most of us play this game. So let's continue to keep pushing and see what it takes to break us. The rest of the Necrocell mission is definitely in the state and mindset of what the term end game and challenge boils down to. And yes, obviously I realize I'll get some sweat listening in on this thinking, this is easy. Meh. Sure, it is, it is. But it doesn't change the idea that this is literally the definition of what I stated. And we have to factor the average player. The average player? In which I feel these missions, if unprepared for, will punish them and expose the lack of survival and damage within their builds, which I like. So then. With all this being said, let's talk about the new Archimedia deep dives and what we know of them so far. During DevStream 177, DE showcased the first look of Archimedia deep dives and boy, what a sight to behold. Let me run you through a few things. First of all, this is a running collective of three missions within one city. Yeah, you're hearing that right. So if it says exterminate first, then you will obviously do your killing and complete it. Now, normally you would just go and leave, head back to the relay, get your rewards, yada yada. But obviously you might see where this is going. Instead, now you will stay inside the mission when you complete the first first objective and when that's been cleared successfully the second objective begins in this example here a mirror defense will begin to cycle now this concept is an alien to a lot of us players many and i mean many of us have spoken about a concept like this for many years but with the new tile sets located within the albrecht labs they are the perfect size for an opportunity like this to exist i mean the sheer size to transverse them is overwhelming in natural methods so when you go and factor this new system in ah now we're cooking with fire on the left hand side you may be thinking oh god the very paradox random loadouts again and you'd be wrong these are optional loadouts based on the score system so let's go and put this briefly at the bottom you will see a reward bar this bar scales with every option and affix that you tick to make your run harder but gaining more points to ultimately complete your overall missions in less runs now, they haven't quite fully settled on the exact point structure as of right now. I don't think so. But let's put in a hypothetical for you. 
if you selected all eight selections on the left hand side and managed to complete all three of the mission objectives on the right hand side you would have completed all goals required to unlock the next stage of deep dives named elite archimedia deep dives this will provide you with more rewards later and you would do that in just one run for example however if you did not select all of the affixes and you decide to run i don't know just half of them on the left hand side you may need to run this mission twice rather than once you understand so there are optionals to those who want to get things done quicker and can handle the curveball that it throws at them However, you do struggle with it, you could do it in more runs, but less affixes and curses running against you. These enemies will also go ahead and top the Necrocell enemies by starting at a base level of over 300 plus. And this does seem daunting, but in reality, we manage and handle level capped enemies, so we should be more than fine against 300s. Both of the missions will now require keys, and it's a little confusing to how they explained it, so I'll give you my best attempt to explain what I believe is the likely outcome. If I am wrong here, please correct me when this releases so I'm not misspreading information. Every Necrocell mission will now go ahead and require one key. Each time that you play and complete it, you will also go and get one reward from its reward table, which was normal. Just the new thing that's going to happen is it will require one key. The Archimedia Deep Dives will require two keys, however, but at a one-time unlock feature. This will hold up to five rewards, however, can be played an unlimited amount of times until you get your five rewards. So you can either choose whether or not you want to do this mission or stick with the Necrocells instead. So this could be likely subject to change, but for now, I believe that's the understanding of the situation. Either way, they both give Archon Shards as rewards, and that's the main seller to do them on top of the new legendary melee arcanes and Tau Forged Archon Shards. All right, all right, that was a lot to cover in just one video i tried to condense it down as much as i could but my question to you is with how things are going in terms of difficulty reward and structure if you could suggest the next three important things to add to warframe to help its end game what would you like to see this is already a great beginning of a topic so important to the longevity of this game so i'm really happy with the current playable state of warframe and more than excited to see what 2024 brings us so thank you guys for watching today's video a friendly reminder to give the video a cheeky like if you did enjoy it and if you're new come subscribe for more videos but as always i'll be seeing you guys again in the next video